All right, everyone ready? This is part five of the Multimedia Fusion RPG tutorial. Today we're gonna be working on, you know, um, naming your character and making a start screen. I'm not gonna put a lot of detail into this, like I've said many times before. <laughs> but, um, first off, you need two new frames. You already have the main with the um, character, and you have the menu frame. Now you're gonna need a title and a setup frame. We're gonna add another frame in later, but just not now. Anyways, you're gonna want to make one of those new game continue or quit screens, you know, for a basic main menu. Um, I'm not feeling in the mood to make a lot of stuff, so I'm just gonna have something simple here. New game and continue or load game as some people like to say so we're gonna have two frames here an arrow pointing to new game for those people who want to start a new game I'm gonna copy this here with control and C move to the second frame press control and V and we're gonna move this down here it's probably not lined up but oh wow it's lined up lucky me uh, horizontally centered, vertically centered. I'm gonna make the initial value one, minimum value one, and maximum value two. Um, when you move up on the joystick, it will subtract from this counter one. When you move down on the joystick, it will add to this counter one. So, um, pretty much so far, this is what we have. Yay! New game and continue. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to this menu frame we had. Um, we added in an INI file and we didn't get to use that a lot, but we're going to start using that today. Go to the title screen, drag this INI file from the menu frame, and put it up top. You're also going to want to go to a setup frame and drag this INI file here. For this setup frame all you need for now is a string but we'll get into what's going to be in that string item later. <coughs> Anyways, we're going to make a new event and this is on the title frame. We're going to make a new event which is at the start of frame set current file to file name application path name plus if you have a folder inside of the um, same folder that your game is in you might want to put the name of that folder then backslash it but I'm not gonna do that now I'm just gonna you know make a basic save thing save dot uh, this could pretty much be anything you want so I'm gonna, just gonna do save dot RPG it's gonna be the name of my file now the first major event if this counter is equal to one one being new game while um, let's say spacebar is pressed then it will reset your game it will reset everything you have and if we remember from the last video this INI file we have let's see we have HP max HP MP max MP potion antidote herb diamond and sword So we're going to want to reset all of those. First we're going to start by setting the value of the item, HP. You don't want to make the HP zero because at the beginning of the game, you know, he's going to have no health. So let's just make it something basic at about um, 50. We're going to set the max HP to 50 as well. Uh, let's set the MP to about 20. Let's set the max MP to about 20. Um, potion zero. Just gonna make five of those for the items we have. There is a shorter way to do this, but I just wanna make sure everything is clarified here. So we know that we have 
zero amount of all of these items. Um, I believe the last two were diamond and sword. So there we have that. All right. Now that that's in place, um, when I click spacebar on new game, it will set all this to zero. Then it will jump to the mainframe. But once again, we're not going to be using that just yet. We're going to press Control and C. Oh, this event is blacked. Then press Control and V. Change this one to two for continue. And we're going to get rid of this and this. This is when we add one more new frame. And this frame is going to be titled the loading frame. This is where most games, you know, put a black screen, a text at the bottom that says loading just in case it takes a while to move on. But um, my computer is pretty fast, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to take a while. Um, so it's going to jump to the loading frame. Oh, one more thing in new game, number one. You're going to want to add in a string. Well, two strings, actually. Because we have name. And that's going to be blank. Then we have location, which will also be blank for now. This will jump to frame number three which is loading frame. We're going to want to move this INI file to the loading frame, go to the event editor of the loading frame, then make this at the start of frame, compare two general values. If location is equal to blank, then it will jump to frame main to let you know that that's where you last left off. If you had other frames, that's where it would tell you that you last left off. So we're going to move on to this main frame and we're also going to add in this INI file. We're going to make this so that at the start of frame it will set string location to blink. See how that corresponds with everything else? And one major, majorly important thing that we have to remember is this file. Without copying this file to every frame with an I and I on it, then, you know, we'll never know what we're saving exactly. Luckily for us, this is Multimedia Fusion and we have everything easy. We can go to this event setting of the properties of the actual game, go to Global Events, and then add in this INI file, control V at the start of frame, set current file to save RPG. Now on every frame with an INI file, that's what the file is going to be. Okay, so everything is pretty much set up there. Now we have to work on the actual setup. What this string is, is it's a list of all the letters um, for the name input screen because after you start a new game you have to input the name for your RPG character that you want to um, have for the rest of the game. Um, all you pretty much have to do is type in the alphabet and put a space, just a single space in between each letter. Um, put whatever you want but after this you want to hide the string outside of the frame. Then you want to create it as a backdrop object. Let white be that. You want to copy this, press OK, delete this backdrop object, insert a new object, which is a counter, change it to animation, then paste this here. As you can see, the transparency kind of fooled us, but there. From then on, um, we're going to make little selection boxes and whatnot surrounding each letter that's selected. Luckily for you guys, I already had this done beforehand, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this video. I'm just going to drag this down here. I'm gonna put this here, about horizontally centered. Each frame is a selection of each letter, 
all the way down to 38 frames. Initial value 1, minimum value 1, maximum value as many frames as you put here. <coughs> You're going to want to add in the string parser object. Well, not string parser, string tokenizer, which you can find right about here. This is a string tokenizer object. You can download it from Darkwire's extension website. You're also going to want to add in another string, which you can leave blank, well, completely blank for now. Now let's get into the events. Upon moving right on the joystick, it will add one to the counter. Upon moving left, it will subtract one from the counter. Upon moving upwards, it will subtract 13 from the counter. And in case you're wondering why it subtracts 13, it's because each character, each line, I mean, contains 13 characters. So if you're on A and you press up, it'll move up here. If you're, if you're on A and you move down, it'll go to N. So let's just copy this. When you move downwards, add 13 to the counter. This is how the name selection looks so far. So far, so good. You can navigate around the letters. But problem is, we have to find out um, what we want to type as the name. So let's use the space bar once again. Upon pressing the space bar, and this is where that string you made earlier will kick in. This string, the first string that we have, that's why it's hidden outside of the frame. We're keeping this. Anyways, upon pressing space bar, it will add to the second string, which you cleared out earlier. It will change the alterable string to string two alterable value plus get element current value of counter minus one valid expression now you're going to want to go to split string on the string tokenizer select string number one as the alterable string in the delimiter it's going to be a space, just like you left in between each letter. This is how your name input should, you know, pretty much look so far. Gonna start this by putting in my name. And as you can see, when you press space bar, each letter you select goes in. Now, upon pressing enter, you're probably gonna have like an end option at the end of this like in traditional RPGs but I'm kinda of rushing through this so upon pressing enter it will set string item the items name being name it will set that string to string 2 before we get into the next section we're gonna want to go back to this title screen here Instead of making it jump to the um, loading frame, it should jump to the setup frame, frame number two, upon clicking new game, which is number one. After it jumps to the setup frame, it will change your name to whatever you input, then it'll move on to the loading frame. Just to be sure, you always want to set the file, because global events don't always work application path name save dot rpg you may want to copy this and put it on every other frame that has the ini file including the main one once that's finished you can go ahead and test everything out So of course, you select new game, it takes you to the name input screen. This is where you input your name. If 
then you press enter to confirm your name. Thus your adventure begins. You can justify that everything works by going to the menu frame, running that. Oh, well, I forgot to set this current file. Like I said, global events don't always work. So you want to set this current file to save RPG. Make sure it's at the very top. Then you want to run this frame. Make sure that everything you input it is there. And there you have it. Your name, HP, MP, everything is shown up.